program is brought to you by P. Murphy & Associates, successfully providing IT professionals to Southern California businesses. Hi, this is Marlene Gibb with What Do You Do? And today I'm at Bon Furs with Steve Zaslow, and we're going to be discussing furs, right? That's right. But tell me about the fur industry. What is happening? Well, the fur industry is going through a rejuvenation. We're busier than we've been in the last 25 years. Uh, people are becoming aware that everything that we use in our industry is ranch raised, nothing wild or trapped. And because of that, uh, popularity has come back. The animal activists, to a great degree, have dropped our industry. Now they're going after other th aspects, uh, zoos, circuses, that type of thing. And if the animals that are used, raised uh, for the fur industry are on the part, the only the uh, partial value of the animal is the fur. The rest is all the byproducts that are used for other other uh, commodities, such as uh, cosmetics, uh, food. Uh, medical research, all sorts, a number oh, really? of other things, sure, yeah, yeah, and meat. Uh, one of the most popular furs that we use locally uh, is uh, Rex rabbit. Rex rabbit is raised in France, and Rex rabbit is the second most popular meat in France, second only to chicken, greater than really? beef, and it's for human consumption. And one of the byproducts is the fine quality fur that's produced by these animals. And so the, the fur is, is used in, for, uh, for all sorts of garments that we create. How many of these um, animals are kept in and just raised for fur and meat? And how many are in the wild, do you know? Oh, uh, I would imagine that it's equal in, in population. Uh, but as I said, our industry doesn't use anything in that wild aspect I know. because uh, uh, the, we are able, if we're able to control the genetics and the and the breeding, uh, we're and the and the the diet that goes into it, we're able to create something that's much better than something that's that's wild uh, because of the genetics and the and the diet. We're able to produce fine quality pelts. And all the uh, all the pelts have the same coloring or differentiation. When they're wild, it would look like if we tried to make a garment out of wild pelts, it would look like a patchwork quilt. Where here, it's all there's uniformity and continuity of color and, and texture, and so that's why we want to use ranch raised. And so. Uh, Ranch raised animals are from all over the world. We get our, our, our pelts from farms and ranches all over North America and Europe and Asia. Really? Mm -hmm. This is a big business raising. It's a very big business, yes. To give you one of the most popular furs that has been for the last half century is mink. And mink has always been generally looked on upon this as something that's a nice fuzzy type of fur that, that wears well and, and is, has an a, 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 a air of uh, luxury and richness that can, you, know, you could really dress yourself up to. Well, lifestyles have changed, and this type of garment is not necessarily as popular as it used to be. Mink is still number one fur, but today 90% of the mink garments that we create are sheared. And here's a couple of different types of sheared mink. When you shear it, you shear away the guard hairs. Okay, you got it. And the guard hairs were the things that were the coarse, fluffy effect. This is, creates a, like a velvety effect. Mm -hmm. And it's soft and very pliable, and it's half the weight of the conventional mink. And by doing that, we're able to make garments that are, can be worn casually, as well as dressy, and they're half the weight of the old-fashioned type of mink. So if someone brought in one of, like an older mink, you may recommend that they, that they We average, for locals, we average two to 3,000 garments like this every year, restyled to something like that. Wow. And this way, where they had to dress up to put on one of these garments, they only got to wear it maybe two or three times a year. When we shear them, then they're wearing, you know, two or three times a week. I and mean, they wear the, them with jeans? With a pair of jeans or, or an evening gown with the same garment, but you can wear it to the market and not feel ostentatious. You can wear it anywhere. It's a very popular effect. Yeah, okay. So mink is still the number one fur, but all these other types of furs uh, with well, the, around here do the, are the same type of look. Here's a, here's now, a, here's where, a, does, where does this mink come from? 
That mink comes from the United States. It's ranch raised here in the United States. In this, in this gray one, this was. The, this one, that one's the same thing. America. America. So we try to the finest breeding stock for mink in the world is the United States. Uh, number two, number two is Canada. Three is Russia, and four is Asia. And that's in quality levels. And it's all, again, based on breeding stock and the diet. <clears throat> okay, now was, is, this, is this, one, this, this is one you designed, or is it a newer yeah, one no, or an every, older? Everything is your ear every, every, Everything's okay. new. Everything's we designed right here on the premises. And, uh, yes, so, so they're all within uh, you know, six months to a year old. And then people can bring in their coats, like if someone had a coat like this and wanted to sh share it like right. that. Right, and, and we have lots that. of samples, but we, we can also, uh, uh, if they come in with a photograph or an advertisement or something, we can make a pattern from anything. That's not a problem. Yeah, because you're the designer. Well, I know, but it's just that we can, you know, they have an idea in their head that they want to create, and we're happy to work with them. And we go through fittings to make it the way they want it. And what, what is this? That is Fox. And that's, uh, that's just, uh, that's dyed in a, in a high fashion color. It's a, we call it a pastel purple. And okay. that can be, that can be worn. Now that looks, is, that looks more casual, is that more of a casual? Well, yes. We, we, we like to joke that we do a hooker line. Oh, okay. And this is one of our hooker coats. Well, that's, I, I like that coat. Yeah, I could see the sense that you would be attracted <laughs> to it. But it looks great on a street corner. Okay. It looks warm. No, it's actually any. just as warm as any of the others. Really? Okay. Yeah, it just that it, it's bushier, bulkier, and when with a with a fur garment like this with the fox, you have to be fairly tall to carry it off, or it makes you look like the Pillsbury Doughboy, because it's it, 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 all that bushiness makes you look like you gained thirty pounds. Yeah, I can imagine. So where where does fox come from? Fox this comes is, our fox that we yeah. use comes from Canada or the U.S. Okay. But it, uh, the largest breeder of fox in the world is Scandinavia. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. They have the largest fox farms in, in the world. Wow. See, every country has its own specialty. <clears throat> and again, it was developed over the last 50 to 75 years of breeding stock. And the finest, uh, they develop the genetics and they keep, continue it on. They keep it a, a private uh, practice and recipe, so to speak, uh, of how to do the genetics and breeding so they produce the finest of, of a particular species. Why would someone buy a fox coat over a mink? Just a matter of preference. Some people, f m the vast majority of women in the world think this is the sexiest thing in the world. <laughs> but, the, <laughs> but the vast majority of women in the world can't wear There's, this. Yeah. We have a, 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 a policy that if you're under 5'9", and you want something like this, we will do everything in our power to dissuade you because it's going to overwhelm you. It's going to wear you rather than you wear it. And I bet you have people my size who like that. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's, yeah, it's, it's sensuous. Yeah, it's beautiful. The, the draw, but the drawback is it, 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 it makes you look like you, you know, you're yeah. wearing so, something you borrowed from someone else. We, we like people to look... Nice look, and yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. You don't want them out the door and things that yeah, look we, awful. Yeah, <laughs> Where'd we, you we, get it? we don't want people to be tacky. <laughs> yeah. We were talking earlier about uh, Rex Rabbit, and there's all different forms of Rex Rabbit. Uh, to give you an example, this is sheared Rex Rabbit. And this makes a fairly inexpensive type of garment, and it, it wears well, and uh, it's not, uh, again, ostentatious necessarily. And uh, let me bring over a sample. Yeah, this is, and, and, and rabbit's very warm. Rabbit's very warm. This is what it looks like before, uh, now this is in a, in a somewhat of a natural state, but and this is a sheared, and it's like, it's like uh, chinchilla in a way. Oh, it's beautiful. It, it, very, very thick oh, nap nice. and uh, very dense fur, and uh, it uh, wears very well. It used to be the rabbit was predominantly domestically raised, and the domestic rabbit would shed within a short period of time, and you were constantly brushing the, the excess fur off of your clothing, and blowing it out of your face. And uh, with Rex Rabbit, you don't have any. It doesn't shed, and it wears like iron, and it's a, a durable type of fur. Oh, that's beautiful. And it's, and it's inexpensive compared to a lot of the other types of furs. That's and awesome. and we do it in all different manners. We do it in le left in a natural state. We do it in a sheared state, like the one you're holding. And that, there's all sorts well, of that's other That's a dressier one. To me, that's right. dressier. That's this, this is very... 
that's very sporty. This is a little more casual style, yeah. right? It's, yeah. And the vast majority of our clientele want things that they can wear anywhere. This is much more versatile than this. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and the color, I think, is 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 nice. Mm -hmm. Here's an, an example of the same sort. These are Rex rabbits also, and mm -hmm. they're done in a corduroy manner where they're, they're feathered with, so that they create a, a, a pinstriping effect that is or the, a corduroy effect. And again, it's just that t simple texture, lightweight but warm and reflects all your body heat. That's, yeah, they're, they're beautiful. And, and, and yeah, you could, you could wear those casually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are lovely. And then you can get them in any color. Any color you want. So you, 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 you have to dye those, right? We dye them, and yes, but there are natural colors too. Here's another one. This is, is uh, that feathered? This is feathered, okay. and, this, and this also is reversible. It can be worn with a leather, a oh, leather on the outside or fur on the outside. Oh, that is if you cool. want more warmth, you put the fur on the inside. Yeah, well, last November and December of last year here, it was so cold. I think it was one of our coldest winters. In that same vein, let me cross in front of you and I'll show you. This is a Rex rabbit also, and this has been stenciled. We stenciled it in a leopard print. And oh, yeah, because you, you, you're not going to... And it has the leather on it. It's kind of a, a style that would be popular if you're into Harley Davidson's or something. You know, it's a rough and tumble. Okay. One of the most popular types of garments that we do now is, the sheer, like as, as I said earlier, the sheared mink. But Women want to have a garment that they can travel with. We have a lot of young women that are professionals that are traveling a great deal and they want to be able to carry, kill two birds with one stone. So they'll take this and it's reversible. This is oh, a this raincoat. Is, oh, this is this nice. This is a Gore-Tex material on one side. So it repels any type of moisture. And then it's a sheared mink on the other. So it's very lightweight but very warm. And you can wear it during the day or you can wear it at night. And depending upon how you, how you wear the, the garment, it uh, goes with whatever you want. This is good for Chicago. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. It travels well, gives you a lot of warmth. It, the, the fur itself, if you take care of it, will repel any type of moisture. You have to clean and glaze it every couple of years. And that, what does glaze mean? Glazing is the secondary process in cleaning, and it puts lanolin back to the hair follicles. And it keeps the, the fur soft and supple, but also acts as an emollient and repels any type of moisture. Now, natural lanolin will oxidize away within a couple years. So we tell our clientele to always uh, clean and glaze it every two years, and that will protect it. And so you don't need to worry about uh, the moisture, rain or snow or anything like that, but uh, uh, you need to protect it in that regard. The other thing we remind our clientele about is uh, to, to put their garments in storage every spring and summer. It's to your advantage. Cold storage is 35 degrees, 45 percent humidity, and that suspends them from any type of deterioration. Even if your house is centrally air-conditioned, it's not cold enough to... What, what if you have a, don't have any air conditioning at all in your house? Then you really just need to do it. Most people bring their furs in for storage around May or June when it starts to get warm and they, think, they know they're not going to be wearing them. And then they take them out around October, November, and they wear them through the fall and winter. And then, and then you, when you, they bring them in, you do, do you do the... Oh, every other year. Every other year. Yeah, but we they, don't have to do it every year unless they've been a sloppy eater. You know, they've okay. been spilling things all over it. Other than that, every two years. And that's a very minimum of uh, upkeep. It's not expensive to store, and it's not expensive to clean and glaze. But it does maintain it, and that way, you know, these garments, that everything that I'm showing you, last 100, 150 years yeah. with, a, with a minimum of upkeep. So you just have to spend a little money, and it lasts a long time. Yeah, I think a I think person buys a fur, they know they're going to have it for their lifetime. Right. Well, some people don't realize that, but that's the, I mean, nothing lasts longer in your wardrobe than one of these garments. Now, when, when, you, when, you, when they come in and you're, you're, you're going over everything with the woman, how you think she'll look in it. I mean, sometimes I have a picture in my mind. Well, we, we try to be honest, but sometimes we wind up sticking our, our feet in our mouths because we, they don't want to hear the truth. You wow. know, we all have a visualization of how we are in a mirror. Well, I think if... Well, but think we try to work with them in regard to what they... What what they'd like to do and how, and how we can do it for them in regard to a new garment or restyling an old garment. And even like if they're choosing a, a color like this and maybe their complexion won't go, do as well with a color like right. that. Right, we'll tell them up front in that regard. We want them to have, again, versatility. 
We want them to be able to wear with any shade, with any type of coloring, and with their hair and complexion. So we want it to balance all the way around. This is an extreme to a degree by our conservative you know, following. Uh, so a, a person that would have something of this color would have a tendency to, to uh, maybe use this as a secondary or tertiary garment, not a primary. That's uh, fox. That's fox. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's I'm, I, 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 how do you? How do you, you just? Go, I just grew up with it. Oh, yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> That's but, right. But but people that are that have furs, with a small amount of education, they're able to know right away what the what, what's out there. You just need to expose yourself to that. And it's just like anything else, like wools or, or fine yardage or material. You learn to, to know the lingo and know what to recognize. Uh, and, and it doesn't take a lot of time to, to do that. And once you've educated yourself, you can go around uh, pointing just, fingers and criticizing everywhere you go. Well, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's, very, it's very sensual. It, exactly. It's, it's just a real sense. It's, uh -huh. just, it's nice to feel. Exactly. And then people love that and uh, they, they get a lot of uh, enjoyment out of having that type of garment. Uh, just in, in that same vein, uh, just a little side story. A few weeks ago we did a, uh, uh, a jacket uh, as a gift from a husband to, a wife, to his wife. We made a garment uh, and it's a very low-key type of thing. It's called Nutria. Nutria is the South American cousin to the North American beaver. And it's very low key, but it's very soft, and it's, it's, uh, it's a, a popular effect. And it wears like iron, and we, lined, we made the garment for her, and she fell in love with it, and, and she wore it out the, the, the same day that they were going to the track, to the Santa Anita racetrack. And uh, about three or four hours later, we got a phone call from the gentleman, and he's screaming on the phone at us. He says, "You've embarrassed me tremendously. I'm just, I can't stand this. This is, this is not the way I, what I wanted to do." And I said, "What's wrong? What's wrong?" And he says, "I'll be over in a minute." And he drove back over here quite quickly. And he comes in with the jacket and comes in with his wife and he says, "You've embarrassed me." And I said, "What? What did we do wrong with the jacket?" And he says, "Nothing." But when she puts it on, she's rubbing herself all over. <laughs> and he says, you know, she's not, and she, and she looks at me and she's got tears in her eyes and she says, I can't stop myself. I don't know, you know, I, and she says, I gotta, I've, I've got to be able to take off the jacket. I can't wear it because it embarrasses him, but I just want to rub myself all. And he says, well, I can't be seen in public like that. And I said, well, let me think about what we can do. He says, you better think about it. And he stomped out the door. And so we got into huddle, my, my, my crew and I, and we uh, said, what are we going to do about this? And somebody finally came up with the idea, we'll make, them, make her a little muff. And the <laughs> muff will be for her hands to put in, and it'll have the fur on the outside, but also on the inside. She'll play with the muff and forget <laughs> about the jacket. And I love it. And that's what we did. And was he happy? Yes. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> That is the, oh my God. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was, that was such, yeah, I can, I, I can understand that. Yeah, that just, okay. But, you know, there's all sorts, you know, it, it, as you said, as you use the term, it's a very sensuous type of material. Oh, and you have to look in that perspective. You know, uh, you have to accommodate the wear. And so that, that happy medium going back to like the. Like so the now, do, now do you have a line of muffs? We do. I we remember. Make, I had. I had a little. We make, make. We make a variety of different types of muffs. We make pillow muffs. We make uh, uh, purse muffs. We make barrel muffs. Oh. We do all the different types of muffs because there's always a popularity. Last last this last summer in August in about a hundred degree weather, for a wedding we made for the bride and bridesmaids all little white mink muffs. The wedding was out on Portuguese Bend at Wayfarer's Chapel. Uh, it was a warm day even out there, and they all had their little mink muffs. No accounting for taste. Oh. <laughs> anyway, but the, the, uh, going back to this, the most popular effect, simply for versatility, it's nothing necessarily sensuous, but it, it has a nice feel, a nice yeah, weight, is the sheared mink. 
And then we, we, all the furs that we use, we do a lot, we also will knit with them. We have a group of ladies, and we created a cottage industry over 30 years ago. Oh my goodness. And we knit these, these furs. We make yarn first, and we make skeins of the yarn, and then we, we put the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the pattern to, with the skeins together, and the ladies will knit the, knit the garments for us. And we make these vests, we make jackets, vests, but we also do much more formal looking knitting too. This yeah, just this happens to be, again, a more casual look. Yeah, that's pretty. And this is Rex Rabbit Knit, and this. Oh, it, yeah. And it's very soft oh, and yeah. very becoming and not costly. Broadtail lamb. Lamb is raised in South Africa, raised in, in, uh, uh, in Russia, and it's a very popular effect. It's very low key, very flat type of fur. And people would think that because it looks so flat and all that it was <coughs> unborn or baby. And it's not anything like that. It's just it's, ra it's raised in this manner. And it's raised to have a texture that is very shallow in regard to hair follicles. Is it, is it as warm as... as uh... Yes. Really? Not necessarily. It is to a degree, but not as much as something that would have, have more, more guard hairs to it. Here's again another of, of our mink, and this is reversible again. This is a vest that's reversible. Oh, that's nice. You know, and it's uh, very practical. The only requirement when you wear a vest is a long sleeve blouse or sweater underneath it. You can't wear it with a naked arm because it doesn't balance well. But with a long sleeve blouse or sweater, you can just wear it anywhere you want. And our customers, 85, we have done a study, 85% of our clientele that have vests will wear them. Uh, uh, year round, even in the cool evenings of the summer. You, really? know, you go to the beach for dinner or the mountains for the weekend, you take your vest along with you. You don't need anything more than that. And a long sleeve blouse or t shirt or sweater. This is mink again. And this is the one that, what do you. This is stenciled. This is, a, the, this is stenciled to look like, like leopard. So the, is the other one that we looked at, is that stenciled? That's too? also stenciled too. That was Rex Rabbit. That's Rex Rabbit. And this uh -huh. is stenciled. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. All different types of techniques and textures. People come into us and they find garments ready made and we're happy to work in that way. But we also have over here, we do what we call plates. They're like a blanket. And we take these plates and we dye them and we, we sew them and make them into these large, like a bedspread. And people come in and choose the material and we can make a pattern and make a garment for them should they like the, 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 the color, but they want a particular type of garment. And you, when we sew fur, we sew it on the leather side. So you can see all our seams on the leather side, on the hide side. On the other side is the, is the, is the, the fur itself. But this is the side that all the dirty work is done on. Then you, then you put satin in, in, in lining, well, right? Well, but this could be made into a garment. What mm -hmm. I'm trying to say is we can make it into a jacket, and we lay up our patterns out on like you would yardage and, 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 and make a garment. Yes, yes. And there's, there's one in pea soup green, and this is black, and there's one in a burgundy. What colors are the most popular? Black is the, the most popular, but it, nowadays anything goes. Here's a wonderful color that uh, you know used to be considered oh my god it's it's like a costume well not anymore and this is lavender i love that color i think it's beautiful isn't that nice yeah. and that's something you know you before you would be think very limiting in what you could wear but when you put it on with other clothing it goes with earth tones it goes with hot and cold colors it goes with everything and so it's not something that's that's ostentatious it's not something that you know you're, you're limited to what you can wear with yeah it's pretty yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> a touchy-feely. Okay, well here's things too. We do things in variegated forms. This is a model tone of sheared mink. And we've created a, 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 just a modeling of, of all the different co uh, colors of brown and beige to create a patterning effect. And uh, That's a cape. This is a cape jacket, right. It has a sleeve, a mild sleeve effect but it's really a, basically a cape with a belted front. And to give you an example, you, you can see the, the, the color variation to a degree in this dark. We made a, a sister to it, and it's over here, and I'll bring it over to you. Let me bring it over. And it's in a light shade. And now you can see some of the, you, now you can see some of the work on there. What, 
what happens if you're out in, in a fancy restaurant or something and you spill wine on this? Is, is, is this, is it hard to? No, it'll clean out. Uh -huh. If you get it to us within 24 to 48 hours, we can clean anything out. Uh, we had a, uh, since we're, we're, another little bit of gossip, we had a, <laughs> we had a, uh, uh, a physician uh, in, uh, near, in a local city, and he was going through a divorce with, uh, with his wife, and uh, he came back to his house, uh, he wasn't supposed to be there, came back in a, in a, in a tipsy state, and was uh, upset and walked into his wife's um, walk-in closet and he had a, a scalpel in his hand oh, and a bottle of wine in the other and he was drinking and cutting her clothing. And uh, he got to her uh, a mink coat that she had and he poured wine all over it and then cut it all up and uh, she saw that his car, she had come home right around that time, saw that his car was there, called the police uh, and was, uh, they came and they took him out and uh, she called us up the next day and we gathered up the pieces and put it all back together and cleaned it and nobody could tell the difference. Oh, wow. Oh, the hat, the hat. <laughs> oh, we want to know about the hat. Well, the hat is Silver Fox. Yes. And we make hats. All the time, if you look around the room, there's lots and lots of hats. The drawback to wearing a fur hat, a conventional fur hat, is that it doesn't breathe. And after a half hour or 45 minutes, even if you're in a, in a, uh, in a blizzard, you know, you still, oh my gosh, it's a little too hot. Because it, there's no way for any humidity to get off your head. Uh, so uh, we would still have people that wear them for image, but it, the practicality, sometimes it doesn't work real well unless you do something like this. This is a knit skull cap on the top of this fox hat. So it allows the heat and humidity to, to exit, to evacuate, but it, so it's, it's right on top of your head you wear. Right, the fur is only around the outside. And so it works quite well in that manner. And it, 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 you know, you have the warmth, but you don't have the overwhelming warmth. And then, so it's a very nice effect. That's nice. <laughs> and there's, uh, if you look around the room, there's yes. all different types of fur hats. Yes, we. And uh, you know, some of them, are j most of them are just for show. Now this is a knit hat. That's mink, and we've knitted that. Here, I'll put this. How does it look? It does wonders for you. Does it? Yes. <laughs> I don't wear. Are, are hats very popular? Yes. Really. Not for everyone, but you know, in, not, you know, hats used to be a way of life for all men, I, oh, and yeah. now they're starting to make a comeback with the fedora. Although it's more of a costume effect, but it's, people, you know, the pendulum swings both ways. So it's you know, what may, it seems kind of strange today may be, you know, oh, common sure. tomorrow. I grew up with my mom wearing hats. They all wore hats. No, yeah, no. So it, it we, we don't we don't poo poo ideas necessarily. We just uh, reinvent them to each his own. Well, right. they come back in a different way. Right. Like right now, a popular effect is uh, these the stocking caps. And this is a stocking cap. Of course, this is with sequins all over it. Oh, I know. <laughs> and, you know, you can pull it on like, like you would a knit cap when you go skiing. But now people wear them on a daily basis. And, uh, you know, we do all sorts of things like that. Here, let me try this on. Here's another accessory. Oh, God. <laughs> <coughs> They're called slap cuffs, and you put them on, <laughs> and and you wear them wear them over a sweater or a suit as an accent, and when you go out to dinner, you take them off, and if you're, you're afraid you might get them in your soup, right. you, you take them off and you lock them open, and you lay them down next to you at the on your table setting. Oh, that'd be nice with it just a basic. And that black way, and suit. everybody stares at you. What the heck did she do? <laughs> and it, but we have a lot of young women that'll come in for something like this, and they'll put them on their ankles. And when they're wearing stilettos, it looks like they're wearing Manolo Blahnik. So you know, makes them a fancy shoe effect. Wow. And we do all sorts of things like that. We make boot covers, all sorts of things. So. Yeah, this is just very interesting. Very but cool. no, no limitation to, to color. Or is, that, is yellow popular? This is Dijon, lady. Well, I mean, okay. <laughs> Dijon. Is Dijon yeah, popular? yellow is popular. There's, you know, it, no accounting for taste. It's whatever the market <laughs> will bear. Okay. But we're not proud. We'll do whatever a customer wants. And, and well, is it, is it 
a big seller? Mm, no. Okay. I just but they're, you know, every, to each his own. Yeah. So somebody wants to be a little different. These are, here's, let me bring these over got to little, And you've got little purses. These are darling. Oh, yeah. Let me show you these. We were talking earlier about knitting. These oh, are like knitted restyles. We do these all different types. People come with the garden. If they don't want to have their fur left in the original state, we'll make yarn out of it. And we'll make these into other new garments. Uh, to, this is made from two stoles. That one was white, one was black. And we blended the yarn together and then knitted it. What, what kind of yarn do you use? Do you use uh, wool? Cotton, cotton metallic yarn. Oh, so and so you can see the cotton metallic so wo so woven into it. So if someone's <coughs> allergic to wool like I no, am. No, no, no. We don't use wool. Cotton yeah. metallic. And it's, uh, the, co the, 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 the yarn is dyed to the same color as the fur before we go to, to do it. Wow. That's, yeah, those are nice. That's, it, it, and it if, looks again, like it. And again, it has, a, again, long wearing ability, and it's, you know, it's a very practical. People find, you know, like. It's a very, it seems like a very practical. Yeah, like here, here's a, here's a, uh, this was made from a stole, and the stole was probably 50 years old, maybe older than that, and we made it into a little, little vest. That's pretty. And this is knitted, and you can see the yarn effect on the inside, but you can't see it on the outside. And it just wears like iron. This is a purse that we combined the fur with the leather. Oh, that is nice. Yeah, I'd like that. I mean, that, because I'm, I'm... Yeah, you look like an abusive individual. I, I am. With the purse, I'm, it seems okay. that way. Yeah, I so don't know. I can sense that about you. You don't, okay. need, you don't need to see the inside of it. Why not? <laughs> You're nosy, too. Well, I'm here on. Look at look at how. Oh, it's lovely. Well, yeah, we put zippers inside. We put at, compartments this, look inside. Look at how nice that. Look at that. Isn't it? It's that's lovely. We don't fool around. Uh, we were talking about Nutria earlier about the a very soft fur. This is Nutria lined. Now, this is a man's cashmere jacket, and we put the fur on the inside so nobody knows he's wearing a fur jacket. It's a fur lined jacket, but it's nice and warm and comfy and cozy. We've been doing this for... And, and the, men, the men must like it. They do it, like it. Well, we've been doing this type of jacket for the California Highway Patrol motorcycle officers for about 35, 40 years. And they bring in their jackets. Now, their jackets are heavy green nylon, you know, right. the, for the motorcyclists. But we line them. And then they've got additional warmth. Now, they have, this is out of their own expense, but it, it's very practical and very durable. And, uh, well, they're on the bikes. It's on cold. The bi exactly. It's and this cold. Re re gives them even more reflective warmth. But we do the same thing for men. And they can come in with their own jacket or they can cut and get one of ours. When, if, when they, we ask them if they're going to come in with their own, it has to be one size larger than they normally would wear because it has to accommodate that, that fur. It's not real heavy, but it takes up a little space. That's nice. Yeah. And then we do all sorts of things. Here's an example of one we're just doing for a movie. And it's a pimp coat. A pimp coat. <laughs> yeah, and this is a. Yeah, that's how you when you when you see pimps in the, the movies. Yeah, that's, that's, their, that's, how, that's what they would wear. Yeah. And this is designed. We ha, we were requested to make it big enough that the person wearing it would be able to have hang hold have a shotgun on a sling on the inside of the garment, <laughs> and that's going to be used for, for a movie. We do a lot of costuming for movies, for feature film, television, all sorts of things. And you probably do, you, you if they're making movies, well, 50, 70 years ago, you... Period you, pieces. We yeah. do period work all the time. Because they, they, they want those garments. Do they come in with what they want, or you do you...? They come in usually with what they want. We also have huge catalogs of that. I'm third generation here, so we have, we have design books and costuming and patterning books that uh, we've had for 70 years and going back far, even farther back and they use some of our books too to get ideas. Well the movies in the 30s, 40s and 50s, I, I remember seeing a lot of minks, a lot of fur. Well, all, you know, the, the, uh, the, the original studios that were built in Los Angeles, movie studios, were built by pe people from, from back east that were in the garment industry. And so they had their own costume makers and they had their own furriers on premises at the studios. Now that's a rarity and so they, they contracted out to people like us. But you're, you're, there aren't that many f uh, furrier, furriers. furriers. No. Uh, I myself am uh, uh, one of three that's west of the Mississippi that still does every facet of fur work. Wow. So it's kind of few and far between.
There's lots of people, that, places that sell furs, but they're not actual furriers. Our clientele knows us. If they're in, in a mood, bad mood, uh, they can come in here, and this is a lot of good therapy by just playing dress up. Touching the furs. <laughs> Touching the furs and, and putting them on and, and standing in the mirror and, and, and enjoying the, what, what it looks like. But, you know, it, it is. And we're amazed that even in the hottest of weather, people will come in and it seems to be uh, psychosomatic. It therapeutically helps them because it makes them feel cooler putting on a fur coat in a hot day. So who knows? And something like this used to be thought of as something that's oh, so busy and limiting and whatever. It's a popular effect that can be worn anywhere. I like that. We'll see. Would you like to try it on now? Come on, let's do that. What the, the, the stylish person walking down Myrtle Avenue would be wearing today. You think? I yeah, think so. Yeah, yes. It's twirl around. That's it. You got a you got a model for us. Okay, I'm Why don't, why don't you go, why don't we go out to the to the <laughs> middle of the room and you look in the mirror and see yourself. Okay. And but see again you can wear it casually. Uh, couldn't you see yourself at the frozen food section of the pavilions right now? <laughs> no, it's cold in the frozen food. <laughs> <laughs> I complained to them, it is so cold. Now, what, what is... This is just a, a, a wool woven poncho, and then we trim it with a fox. This doesn't feel like an itchy wool. No, it isn't. It's a good wool. We don't want itchies. We do a few itchies, but it's only upon request. Most really? of the time we want things nice and soft and something you could fall asleep in. Yeah, because, you know, yeah, that's pretty. Okay, now here's the, the same principle, and this is, but instead of any type, this is again fur. And we do this, and this is, talk about soft. That feels good. Yeah, I like this. Yeah, women can spend a whole day here, Steve. That's and right, that's <laughs> right, and we're happy to let them do that. <laughs> yeah, that's very But the thing about it is that furs, to most people, are a blind item. And so they really don't understand or, under, or respect the texture or anything. So we want them to be educated. We want them to come in and see what it's like. And, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, people really enjoy. Oh, and so we use different types of medium. This is a different type of, uh, of texture. This is a stretchy material. And we've trimmed it with the fur. So you have a little scarf. But we do, and we do all different types of scarves. This is nice. You like? I like. Okay. And, and, and this is the... That's a, the conventional knit with a tr fur trim. We do a, we do a scarf and we do a hat to match. We do, scar again, knit scarves with pockets in them. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay. Hobo bags, knit hobo bags. You know, this is a, a, this is a, a saddle type purse. Yeah, I, I, like, I like the leather okay. with the mink. And we, this, amazingly, when we've made these, is more people, are, you would think that, the, that our horse people would like this. Yeah. It's the people that like to carry large guns. It fits mm -hmm. a 45. Oh my God, <laughs> really? Yeah, that's what it's, most people think it's a gun bag, but it's actually a saddle bag. Well, if you, the way it's shaped, it, well, now that you've pointed out, now that I pointed it out, out, yeah, right. it, it could, yeah, it could easily be. A, but I, I don't think about people having. Them. I know, I know, nobody does. But it's amazing that the vast majority that have requested this type of bag, it's because they want to put something big in it. Do do you do you ship to a lot of uh, something like that? Do you do you have a mail order business? No, we know? don't. Do, we are online. We don't do. We do ninety percent of what we do goes out to stores all over Western U.S. And, uh, but uh, uh, most of our, the things that we go out and do the stores are, are the, the standard everyday type of garments. You know, for our own clientele, we, the sky's the limit. Well, like here, this is, your, this is all your design. What, mm -hmm. what, is, what is the, the ones that go out to the... They're still our designs, but it's what the stores have requested. But it's more traditional. Yes, more, more yeah, in, as we call it, stick in the mud. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Wow, this and this is a pretty piece too. That's a classic jacket, and what we did was f fancy it up by putting uh, the ruffles all over the cuffs and the f tux the fronts and the hem, and that takes a bland jacket, a plain jacket, and makes it into a little more uh, uh, frilly. Yeah, I like that. That's it. That's nice. The, this you have these jackets you have to be tiny to wear. Well, they're little. They're okay. little bolero jackets. They're little. Yeah, but you have to be tiny. <laughs> Here's the, well, no, that's the same basic idea. Let's get you, a, find you one that's a, a little more. This is a classic like you were just looking at over there, but this is without all that uh, ruffling. 
And then this is, uh, again, a simple little jacket. And this is reversible, too. Oh, that's nice. This is, and this is light enough when you, when you, when you go traveling, too. Right. I mean, and it's, it's the only jacket that you probably that's need. Why, that's why our, we, our, our young customers, when they're traveling, they, they take one of these, and they don't have to carry anything else. Right, just a bare We one. do, uh, we put the fur trim on that, but we, we will do uh, trimmings for a, an Indian company that weaves those. They're hand woven, and we just trim it for them. Well, you, this is, your, your store is very eclectic. Yes, we try to be that way. And this now has, are these real? Or these are just Those are Swarovski crystals, okay. and we put them on the mink body. And that's, now, that's not a, 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 an everyday garment. That, we have customers, we have young women that are on their fourth or fifth generation of wearing the same jacket or coat, their great-great-grandmother's jacket they come in with, and they're wearing it still, and we take care of it for them. And every seven to ten years, maybe they'll change a shoulder or change a collar design or change a cuff just to keep it contemporary, and they continue to wear that, and they're the fifth generation wearing that same garment. And on the inside, everybody, every family member that has worn the garment has their monogram. Oh, really? So that legacy runs down the inside of the garment. And what else do you have that you can actually be wearing you know, that, that, that it was your great-great-grandmother's. What, what happens if you have like a stole? A stole? In, in, and, in, and, you know, w women asked me that. I said, because I, I, was, talk I was talking about my interview with, and they said, what if you have a stole? We do nearly, or just as an example, we do nearly t uh, 2,000 to 2,500 stoles every year into vests. Vests are the most, the same, have a, around the same amount of material as a stole would have. But a stole you had to dress up to put on. Yeah, with their dress. Well, now with a, with a vest, you can put this on with a pair of pants or a skirt. And it gives you, and it keeps your core temperature maintained. It's much easier to wear. And the vest, and the stole, you, you, were, you can only wear it in a formal situation. So you, you cut it up. Restyle it. And restyle it. And make it into something like this for the customer. Okay. But you don't have to go necessarily go to restyling. You just you can make it by simple alterations, make it into something more contemporary too. Like a vest. Like a well, like a vest. What but you can take a stole, and some of the stoles had long fronts. You know, they had a cape-like back with long fronts, and we can turn up those cape fr fronts and make them into sleeve effects. So they have somewhat of a sleeve. It's still something kind of dressy, but not 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 too bad. So you're so, so you're not losing a lot of the fur. I mean, you're, you, you no, you're, you're using, using all, all the, the fur, fur, and you're, you're not, not doing you're, you're not, not doing a, doing a lot of alteration to it either. Let me give you an example. This is a, a idea a takeoff on the stole. This is a style that's about 50 years old, and it's a cape jacket. And it's, you know, it's like a stole. You can leave that on. Yeah, I have to leave this on. I'm and you can put this on. And this has sleeves in it, but it's okay. And it can be that's worn pretty. with pants. Oh, and it can be lovely. worn with a dress. There's little pockets in the front. Yes, you got to find the pockets. Yeah, there you go. Pockets. No, that's fine. That's fine. Really but that's the whole thing. And it's, and, and average age of customers that are wearing these, and we do them in every color in the rainbow, is around 25 to 28 years old. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. What about women who are older? That's what I'm saying. If they're wearing it, you can wear it. Right. I think it's pretty. Yeah. I, I, well, yeah. And, and your oh, this is lovely. Uh -huh, yeah. Here's one in a in a in a beige tone. Yeah, and there's are... other ones around here in brown and grays and blacks. There's all different types. So if people have now, if this is this is this is fox. This, this is broadtail lamb. That's what I. But, the lamb. Feels... This is what you've got. You're wearing broadtail lamb also. Yeah, well, the, the, the lamb feels so much different. Yes, but that's only yeah. texture. It's not, we're looking at, we, we want to also look in, in, in practicality. Now, the, one of the things in practicality, Southern California, amazingly, you know, you don't think you need furs because it's not cold. Southern California, amazingly, is the second largest market for furs in the United States. Really? Second only to New York, greater than, than Chicago or Detroit or any of the, where it's a necessity or Minneapolis. Uh, there's no practicality here. It's all fashion. Right. Okay. But it's also a justifiable fa fashion because you you're getting the longevity of wear out of it too. So these only reflect your own body heat. You're never overwhelmed by these no. things. No. No. This is nice. No, this is nice. I like it because it's you know it can move around it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, uh, if you'd like to, you can see the 
the dirty end of our facility. Take a quick look, see at the workroom. Okay, let me give you an example. Here's a customer that brought in. This is about a 30-year-old mink coat. And we took it apart. The woman is, it was, it was her mother's coat. The woman is in her mid-40s. And she's never going to wear this. She knows she's never going to wear it because it's just too formal, too heavy, too cumbersome, and too over the top. So we're taking this mink, and we've taken it apart. And you can see all the labor that's on here, all the work that's been done already to make it into that coat. And we're going to shear it, and we're going to make it into a jacket for her. And then with the remainder, we're going to make a vest. So she's going to get two garments out of this. First of all, the whole thing will be sheared. So and that's a, that's it. I want to ask you. I I I touch the, this this touch this feel doesn't feel like no because because it hasn't had the, the it man hasn't been on it, it hasn't thing. been sheared. The guard hairs are still on it. Okay. So when we shear it, it'll become a softer, more pliable type of and half the weight. So it becomes much more wearable than than what it is now. Mm -hmm. And so and she has it's a full length coat, and we can make out of that full length coat we can make her a nice jacket and a vest, and she wants both of them sheared. Shearing, cut, we cut away the guard hairs. Yeah. It's like getting, giving it a haircut. And we, when we do that, we have to take each and every one of these skins apart, shear them individually, shear down the guard hair, and then put it all back together. So it's very labor intensive. But restyling something like this is, we, rule of thumb is usually one third to, uh, to one half the cost of buying something new. So it's you're way ahead using your own material. And that's why we do so many as restyles, if they're healthy enough. As I said, if we can't guarantee you 12 to 15 trouble-free years of wear, we're not in the business of making enemies. We don't want you to put good money after bad. Yeah, that's is. So, here's an, now, here's an example, too, of another one. I showed you all those blankets out there, those plates. Yeah. This customer asked to have this made. Now, we made this plate and it's these are these are natural shades of mink and we th we sewed them together in a pattern you can see kind of see that pattern yeah. it's called a scalloped herringbone pattern and when you turn it this way on the on the work side where all the seams are you can see all that scallop it's like a herringbone but it's rounded and it, this creates that texture and, and so we and, and this is a softer look with the, the roundness right. right and we we this is the side that we sewed it, and she wants to have a jacket made out of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a jacket uh, body out of this material, this, this sheared mink. And just to give you an example, what we will be doing is putting this as a collar and trim. It'll be the collar and the tuxedo fronts and the cuffs will all be this long-haired mink as an accent. Wow, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it'll be very practical and versatile and not too over the top not too dressy that she can't wear it as an everyday garment. Yeah, and you've got all these different colors. <coughs> and that's, that's the way we do it. We try to give something that uh, you can get, you, you don't have to think twice about. You just grab and go when you're walking out of the house. Oh, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. These two mannequins, uh -huh. they're from the 40s. And uh, we have them, we have dialogue that we put out in front at every night and they make commentary on either the, our business, politics, on anything that goes, anything that's topical, they'll talk about it. We used to be such a, a sensitive field that, you know... Uh, oh, you, really? You know, yeah. yeah. I mean, I have three, children, three uh, young adult kids, two boys and a girl, and they, they're in their mid-twenties. And, you know, I would like them to, thought one of them at least, to have come into the business, but they grew up with a stigma. They're, when they were little, when they were going to school, we, were t we, we told them, if anybody asks what your daddy does for a living, tell him he's a tailor. <laughs> because there was a stigma with the fur. You know, I have a degree in zoology and animal husbandry, and I, I, I represented this industry in debates and, you know, radio and television, that type of thing. Nine times out of ten, if I showed up, no animal activist would, because it's, theirs was from an emotional back state, not from a... Yeah. Uh, practical. Well, I told well, one of my friends I was going to see. She said, oh, no. Are you yeah. going to talk to him about this? I said, yes, I will ask Oh, yeah. Him no, first. no, no. We're, I, said, we're, I, said, I said, I'm going to do my research, you know. Yeah. Well, that's why we've come back in such a strong manner, because there, there is nothing wrong with what we're doing. And, every, you know, 
uh, you know, it's, it, everything is ranch raised for a specific reason, so. When you sew fur, it's totally different than a conventional clothing sewing. Sewing machines, conventional sewing machines go up and down. <coughs> Our sewing machines go back and forth. And so we're sewing a seam that's, that's, that's not, doesn't, doesn't show on the, doesn't show on the fur side, only shows on the, on the hide side. Wow. So it's, it's, a, it's a whole different technique of sewing, a very different perspective than conventional clothing, conventional yardage. This one, now this is my, my mother's. I remember, <laughs> and, the, and I the, look at this and I think, God, that was my mom's This is a generation. throwback. Now this is a customer's <laughs> coat. They got this from us 10 years ago. And this is, was a goal in her life uh, that she wanted to have this coat. And, and in the last four or five years, she's lucky if she gets to wear it once or twice a year. So now she's come back in and says, all right, I want to shear it. I want to make it into something else, but I want to keep it as a coat. So we're going to, she hasn't committed what, what, how she wants it styled yet. She's going to come back in. But we're going to take this coat that we made for her a decade ago, and she's going to, we're going to shear it and make it into something a little more contemporary. Yeah. Because, I, I, again, this is so dressy, and, and it's heavy. You know, when you shear that coat, it becomes one, one quarter the weight that it is now. And this, uh, this thing, you, walk, you put that, jack, that coat on, and even though it does fit her well, as she walks a block, she feels a little tired from it because of the weight. When I, yeah, I, when I looked at that, I thought, God, that's my mom's generation, because I remember women wearing that. And also is the color from your mom's mm -hmm. generation. It's a pretty color. You know, again, going back to genetics, every year there's new colors that are created, and sometimes we go back to the old colors because there's not enough new colors, and so we just, sometimes we revert back uh, color variations. But it is an old style color and makes it look even older than it is. Right, right. When Mattel industry started on the original Barbies, mm -hmm. uh, they came to my father and he made the, the patterns and the original little stoles and jackets for Barbie. Oh my God. And it was just too labor intensive because they wanted him to go into production to it and he didn't and he, they paid him for making up the patterns and then they took it to another, to a, a foreign country to, uh, to... Back in, in the, that was in the 60s. In the early 60s. So they, to, were, just, so they were doing, working with foreign countries then too? Oh sure, yeah. yeah. But it wasn't, it wasn't fine labor either. It was just, you know, making these little tiny doll dresses. So it was a doll garment. So it went over. But we didn't, nobody ever thought it was going to be much of anything anyway. So, so what about the Davy Crockett hats? We, oh, made yeah. the, uh, we made the hats, and then the hats got to be too expensive. Like uh, and Disney uh, asked us to just put a raccoon tail on the hats. So we, they would make up a, uh, a synthetic uh, hat. Uh, and then we would just sew the tail on. So, and then they went to the next step, which was completely synthetic. Wow. Well, you know, hat and tail. Your dad had to make stoles for all the famous stars too, right? He had a large clientele. Out there in the other room is uh, a, a couple of pictures of uh, the famous movie stars, yes. Right, and that was more glamorous time for them. I mean, that it was all glamour. Yeah, that was, that was the, the lifestyle then. They had to look good all the time. Right, right. They could not be in jeans or whatever. They had to be look glamorous. Yeah, they, they, you know, they, 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 of course they didn't have paparazzi like they do now. Right, I, yeah, I think they were left alone a lot more. Yeah. This program is brought to you by P. Murphy and Associates successfully providing IT professionals to Southern California businesses.